From the unexplained to the mundane, come join us on a journey to the fringe. Hello and welcome to Journey to the Fringe, where we ask hard-hitted questions like, what happened to that guy on Spotify who kept correcting the words that we were using? I kind of miss him. Yeah, what did happen to that guy? Or girl? Yeah, it was a flash in the pan. They left as fast as they arrived, and we're, we're, we're wiser for it, I suppose, but they're, they're, we missed them. <laughs> Wait, where did you go? <laughs> Anyhow, those are the kind of questions we ask around here. We are your podcast hosts, Taylor and Chelsea. <laughs> Here today, I think talking about an asshole of the fringe community, but I, I shouldn't no. put words in Chelsea's mouth because I did not do this episode nor <laughs> hear any insight to it beforehand. So I will leave it to her. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> Taylor made a guess. And I'm not going to tell you whether it's right or wrong until I'm about to immediately prove whether he's right or wrong. I decided today I needed to cover a lighthearted topic, knowing the future of what is to come. I feel like the ghost from The Christmas Carol, the ghost of Journey to the Fringe, yet to come. I decided on a fun little guy that has fascinated me for a long, long time, yet I would never touch to this day. I always love a good guess. Any guesses? Is it the man who doesn't know what to do with his hands? I'll, I'll give you another hint. Me saying little guy may throw you way off. Because <laughs> it's not a guy. It's not Linda Moulton Howe, is it? No. <laughs> is it... Is it a Bigfoot episode? No, today I'm going to do a little delve into spirit boards. Oh, okay. See, I feel like there could be assholes involved in this. There are. I really threw you for a loop there. Yeah, I was still doing for... all sorts of directions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, but I had to. So I always forget to give you very basic details. So I make my very best effort today. A spirit board is a flat board made out of wood or cardboard, what have you. It has letters of the alphabet on it, numbers 0 through 9, the words yes and no, and sometimes hello and goodbye. Depends on your phone. Then you have the planchette, which is a tear-shaped, little teardrop-shaped little thing that may or may not have a window on it. And the planchette moves across the board to spell messages out, mostly answers to your questions, mostly spooky things from beyond the grave. I just want to, at this point, most people's understanding of a spirit board would be a Ouija board, correct? Yeah. I mean, that's what it's most well known as. It's been... Yeah, like, but they wouldn't be... Like, it's within the category of spirit boards. It's not the entire category, right? That is what it is. It was commercialized as a Ouija board. That's like the particular brand name of... I think it's... I talk about it. Parker Brothers or something like that that turned it into a game. That's what that's known as. The general board itself, an idea of it, is a spirit board. And they all pretty much look the same. You can see a lot of different ones. Just that one in particular is commercialized as a Ouija board. So then you have two or more people who sit around with their fingers on the planchette and you ask questions to which the planchette would move on its own letter to letter to answer the question. So you best know how to spell. Or read. Yep. Both. I think they go hand in hand, spelling and reading, do they not? Uh, Maybe. Dyslexic people would probably beg to differ. True. Okay, so a couple of fun facts before we get started. The Ouija board had actually been proven to work at the patent office before its patent was allowed to proceed, which I talk a little bit later. I'm just curious, Chelsea, when they say it's proven to work for the patent, does that mean you can move the planchette around the board? Or that spirits <laughs> actually come through? It must. I actually am surprised that I put this here. <laughs> because I do talk about it again. <laughs> okay. It does have to glide smoothly though, no matter who controls it. Ghosts also like a smooth planchette. Today, even psychologists believe that it may offer a link between the known and the unknown. Also, what I didn't include in this, which I probably should have, but I was short on time, was that psychologists also think that it provides a really good link to our subconscious when they're moving it around. The name Ouija is trademarked by Hasbro, used to be Parker Bros. Like the Mario Bros, but Parker. But it also is widely used generically to refer to any spirit board See, Do you think there's people that didn't know what brothers are until you said the, the Mario, Mario Brothers? Bros. <laughs> yes, I assume. Okay. Okay. That's where I know bros. We from. have such a weird audience. 
<laughs> is it the audience or our references? Well, it's our references that attract this audience. No, you're right. I had to clarify yeah. for them. I would have thought that the Ouija board went very far. How? Where do you think it goes back to? Oh, I think I remember this. It's the late 1800s, isn't it? Damn it. It, okay. it, it's right around that spiritual area. I do know that. Okay, one. we gotta end this episode now. You just <laughs> do, I know too much. <laughs> that was literally the rest of the episode. <laughs> so, okay, I found a few things. So, for me, I literally thought it would have went back to like the time that we were amoebas or something, but it's way later than that. And because I know in ancient Greece they used to do. Um, they had the seers. Yeah, and they, yeah, they had got high and then the, told you what the gods wanted. They had that. They also had one where it wasn't the same as a spirit board, but they would do something with mirrors as well. Can't remember exactly what it was. Potentially for a future episode, maybe. I don't know. But before the spirit board came along, the first mention of something similar to this was automatic writing, which was a precursor of this. And it goes back to China around 1100 AD in historical documents in the Song Dynasty. The method was known as Fuji, which is planchette writing. The use of planchette writing as an ostensible means of necromancy and communion with the spirit world continued and, albeit under special rituals and supervisions, was a central practice of the Huanjian school until it was forbidden by the Qing dynasty. Actually, there's a ton of super interesting like fortune slash spirit practices out of China. There's bone scrying and the, the fortune sticks where you throw the sticks down and like it tells you the fate of everything and you make your decisions based on how the sticks fall. Yeah. It's kind of similar to things like tea leaf reading. It's it's yeah. all on your actions to which how it plays out. Yeah. Describe your future. Actually, that yeah. just made me realize we should do an episode in the future on. Yeah, I just thought that too. Yeah. Yeah, we know what we're talking. I don't even think we need to finish that. <laughs> Whoever's listening. <laughs> You, the listener, have been selected for these super specific things that we're mentioning in this episode. <laughs> Write it down, please. Send it to us in an email. <laughs> So the actual talking boards, not, what was I just talking about again? Automatic writing, we're familiar with. They come up to us straight out of the American 19th century, like Taylor just predicted and ended the whole episode as we know it. It comes out of the obsession with spiritualism that we've talked about before and makes many sense that that's where it comes from. We've talked about it actually on a lot of episodes, Blavatsky, the Fox sisters, probably some other ones. You'd probably just have to go back and listen to the whole catalog and go from there. If you want a brief rundown of that, it would be around the 1950s-ish. It's actually before that. I don't know why I have the 1950s. This is the late 1800s, not the 1950s. That is very wrong. Could it be 1850 in just a typo? You're right. 1850. Yeah, that does sound right. 1850s. When people were obsessed with communicating with the dead. The Fox yeah. sisters were huge. Madame Blavatsky was surviving her fifth ship sinking. Seances were all the rage. It was simpler times and honestly, what a time to be alive. Could you imagine when seances were like the thing to do? That'd I'm be sure. so cool. Yeah, it's but like that, that means that it's like the only entertainment around too. I, I will much take my streaming services in our podcast over. A seance is going on on the regular. I wouldn't be mad if seances were like all there was to do. So it makes sense for the times. The average lifespan was less than 50. Medicine was not what it is now. Men went off to war and never came back. People were rife with diseases we didn't know how to treat. And the American Civil War just ended. Back to men going off to war. And people wanted to connect with loved ones that had passed on. So the use of talking boards was so common by 1886. Oh yeah, that was a typo. That news reported the phenomenon taking over the spiritualist camps in Ohio, which was part of the war. Kennard Novelty Company was the first producer of the Ouija board, filling a void of mere instant communication. Someone was like, this is going too slow for them to crack their toes to the alphabet that was happening at seances for someone to like. If you're confused, go back and listen to our Fox Sisters Fox episode. Sisters. So that was taking up too much time in people's lives, waiting for like wrappings to come through the wall, toes to be cracked for the letters of the alphabet. So they saw an opportunity. Uh, I wish somebody would invent something that goes much faster. And so the spirit board was born. 
I would also assume that it would make spirit communication more accessible to everyone, being that they wouldn't have to find a seance to attend to talk to a loved one. So some keen businessmen with no interest in seances at all, they were like fast spirit communication and market niche that they did, but name it they also did. And I hope you're following me here because that was a beautiful sentence that I just put together. And one of the investor's sisters, Helen Peters Noseworthy, was a medium, which I think is funny because they weren't into like medium well, shit. Yeah, medium. and people were smaller back in the day. Yeah. What? Uh, you'll get it eventually. Medium. On, yes. on the roof. Yeah. Usually I get it when I re-listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> And you can always tell if I don't get it. <laughs> so they're sitting around the table playing the board in Baltimore, Maryland. And they asked the board, what should they call it? And the name Ouija came through. And when they asked what it meant, the board replied, good luck. So there's a little note here. I didn't read this anywhere else, but I thought I'd throw it in anyway. I'm just, Kelsey, I, how do you take the board saying good luck? Like that's what Ouija means? Or do yeah, you take it yeah. more as like, ah, good luck figuring that out? Yeah, good luck. And it's kind of a passive aggressive asshole. And then asshole it, spirit. it exploded. It is still a yeah. thing to this day. <laughs> or good luck with your day. Maybe they were about to die of dysentery. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> it couldn't, it might not even be a related thought. So that's generally the story of how it gets its name. I didn't read this anywhere else, but I thought I'd throw it in. The medium, Helen, who was doing the, say, the, spirit board reading i don't know how you would say the conductor of the spirit board she said apparently that she was wearing a locket bearing the picture of a woman and the person that was on the locket they think is uida who she admired and that ouija was just a misreading of that so somebody was guiding the planchette huh okay the j and the d are very far away I, actually i don't know i can't remember is a ouija is board set up like a keyboard? yeah that's what i was trying to is it qwerty <laughs> based so. no i think it goes ABCD. it's just alphabetical okay yeah. still d and j are and pretty far apart each other no Sorry, i just got a h-i-j-k ouija board i gotta see yeah, yeah they're not that close especially on the old board oh really okay well they're like on opposite sides of an arc well, I think maybe they just inter... I don't know. Anyhow, I thought I'd throw that. I only read that in one place, but generally the whole accepted thing is Ouija, good luck. So the local patent office at first refused a patent. Bond and Noseworthy then traveled to Washington, D.C., where they were also denied a patent until the chief patent officer asked the board to spell out his name which it did. In 1901, an employee of Bond, William Fold, took over the talking board production under the name Ouija. And I'm just gonna go back to that. That's where they're saying that it was proven to work because it guessed the guy's name. I don't know why they wouldn't know the guy's name before going into a meeting with him, but apparently that's, that's where they say that before they got a patent, it was proven to work. Yeah, I mean, that. They had to know. How do you go into an office and say, I have a meeting with this person? Yeah, he wouldn't give me his name. <laughs> Hopefully we have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The board says we have a meeting. Whoa. <laughs> so the Ouija board was regarded as an innocent parlor game unrelated to the occult until American spiritualist Pearl Curran popularized it as a divining tool during World War One probably should have looked up who Pearl is. I don't think I got there. So that is just, I'll leave you with a question mark on that. If you know anything about Pearl, maybe just put it in the comments. Maybe we'll change our question on Spotify. Maybe it was a literal Pearl. It might have been. Pearl with the last name of Curran. <laughs> yeah. So this is all seemingly rather old timey. I know we're in the 1800s, but I'm about to bring you into whatever century um, we're in because yeah. Chelsea, we're in the 1900s for War One. Yeah, we're we're around that time. Yeah, generally, yes. But we got to come back back to the modern times because the Ouija board now has a website as well, which I didn't know. It's OuijaBoard.us, in which you can 
Discover the mysteries of the spirit world with an online virtual spirit board. The platform blends the traditional Ouija board practice with modern technology offering a unique and accessible way to explore the unknown. It may or may not be AI because you still type a question in a box. So I have my suspicions. I should put a disclaimer right now that I do believe in spirit boards. When I was young, I was obsessed with them. But once I figured out what it was, I don't mess with them. I think I was just more intrigued with the unknown, which we just talked a little bit about in David Politis. It's just not knowing what something is. So I wanted to figure out like what it was. Once I figured out what it was, I don't touch them anymore. I do believe that yes, it can be multiple things at hand. However, I believe that in the other side, and I believe that there are not so good things that are simply looking for an invitation which the Ouija board definitely does and I don't mess with I wouldn't recommend you to and I do know people that have been affected by using one and not in a good way with that being said I wanted to also include some general good practices if you choose to partake in said board and then we'll move on to the good stuff I promise even AI Ouija board has rules on his website or website I assume it's the board's website. The board creation. <laughs> so, I mean, you could code it, couldn't it? Because it has all the letters probably. up there and the numbers. Yeah, it could. It does. The AI Ouija board says how to use. When using the Ouija board, it's important to follow some rules. Choose a calm and quiet environment for your session. Always approach the Ouija board with respect and a serious mindset. Start the session by setting clear intentions and stating that only positive and helpful spirits are allowed to communicate. If any negative or unsettling experiences occur, end the session immediately. And always remember to say goodbye to properly close the session when you're finished. By following these tips, you can have a more secure and enjoyable experience with the Ouija board. So then I just went on to kind of Google some other stuff just to help you guys out. I want everybody to be safe and remained unpossessed or disturbed by bad malevolent things. Malevolent's bad, right? Benevolent. I always get. So yeah, malevolent is bad. bad yes. Bad guys. Bad spirits. Remember, spirits who talk to you through your Ouija board can tell you anything they want. Just because a spirit says something does not mean it true. That includes appearing as loved one. A spirit yeah. will try to win your trust by telling you that they are a long lost relative or a spirit of a small child who needs your help. In reality, the spirit could be malevolent. Oh, it says it right there. Also, just, um, just so that we're all on the same page too, humans are exactly the same. If they come up and start talking mm -hmm. to you just out of nowhere, they're probably not great. Oh, they're no. probably evil individuals. I assume they're bad. I assume yeah. they're evil. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, we're full Why of would life. Why spirits be any different? <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Only the weird ones were going to go talk to strangers. <laughs> so, never use a Ouija board alone. The more people with you when using a Ouija board, the better. This means there is more energy present to connect with the spirit. If not everyone can comfortably sit and touch the planchette, it's fine to have some people just be viewers. They might be mad that they're just a viewer, but they're, they're welcome to cheer you on if they need for support. Do not use a Ouija board in your home. Not sure why. I could just keep reading, but I want to keep these points short. <laughs> Don't leave the planchette on the board. When you are done using your Ouija board, remove the planchette from the board. Even if you are just leaving the room, it's considered bad luck to leave the planchette on the board. I have heard multiple takes on this, including turning the planchette upside down. Is there a clear top and bottom side of a planchette? Some of them have legs. Oh, okay. Them. Yeah, and they're not just flat things that go on there, but there might be. I think there's writing on it but I can't say 100% sure. There's ones that aren't just Ouija. There's some people that collect them. I would never collect them. I feel like there can be pretty negative stuff attached to them, but some of them are pretty cool looking. So I think it depends on the board on what the planchette looks like. I'm just familiar with the regular Ouija board, uh, except for the fact that I used to try and make them. <laughs> I mean, I did make them. Always end your session with the Ouija board by saying goodbye. Like I just, like AI Ouija board told us. If a spirit starts communicating 
communicating with you through the board by counting down or going through the alphabet immediately end the session by saying goodbye. It's a common theme for Ouija users who have contacted a malevolent spirit that is trying to leave the board. If a spirit starts communicating with you by making the planchette move in a figure eight or infinity symbol in the session by saying goodbye, it's another way malevolent spirits have revealed themselves. If you begin to suspect that you're in contact with malevolent spirits or spirit, immediately end the session by putting the planchette on goodbye. It also helps to leave the physical space you are in to sever the energy between the group and the spirit. If you speak to a spirit who identifies themselves as Zozo, end the session and say goodbye immediately. Zozo has been identified as a malevolent spirit. I think that would be a good one for another episode because I've heard of Zozo before. Not personally, thank God. But I've heard Zozo talked about a few times on different podcasts. I couldn't remember the name but i did know that there's a recurring yeah. name that apparently comes up yeah if you're experiencing depression it may be good to avoid using a ouija board that kind of energy draws in malevolent spirits never burn a ouija board going back to depression i've also heard not to use when you're sick pressed under the influence as well because that is something that bad spirits it's look for amazing they were able to create this thing then during a time of dysentery and other ailments that everybody was just constantly under yeah well i don't know it was more i think just of a wanting to speed up the process of going to a seance as well as the times but i think when you look at it in the other way of actually being able to contact with the spirit world it has a few more implications that need to be thought of and i think you're more likely to make contact with something not very good when you are openly trying to communicate with the other side than something actually good just my thought on it so yeah i just thought i'd share that because I was always fascinated with them as a kid, and I couldn't have cared less about how you're supposed to use one. So I think it's really important to talk about that as well, <laughs> just so that you don't get something attached to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. This episode is missing a whole lot of asshole so far. I got you. Who likes the Ouija board, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Lots of assholes. First one. Alistair Crowley loved the Ouija board. Alistair Crowley had a great admiration for using the Ouija board and it had played a passing role in his magical workings. I don't think it came up on our Alistair. Oh, there's another name drop. There's another episode to go listen to Alistair Crowley. I don't remember the Ouija board coming up in that, but that one. I don't think it did. We didn't focus know. too much on the magic itself in those episodes. No, we didn't. We no. focused more just on like a biography of him. Here's a little bit of it here for you. We just covered things like this in passing when it pertains to the topic we're talking about. So you have a lot of episodes as homework to do in this one. Jane Wolfe, who lived with Crowley at Abbey of Philema, also used the Ouija board. She credits some of her greatest spiritual communications to use of this implement. Crowley has discussed the Ouija board with another of his students and most ardent of them, Prater at Chad. That's a strange name. It is frequently mentioned in their unpublished letters. In 1917, a Chad experimented with the board as a means of summoning angels as opposed to elementals. In one letter, Crowley told Jones, quote, Your Ouija board experiment is rather fun. You see how very satisfying factory it is but i believe things improve greatly with practice i think you should keep to one angel and make the magical preparations more elaborate end quote over the years both became so fascinated by the board that they discussed marketing their own design their discourse culminated in a letter dated 21st february 1919 when crowley tells jones quote regarding the Ouija board. I offer you the basis of 10% of my net profit. You are, if you accept this, responsible for the legal protection of the ideas and the marketing of the copyright design. I trust this may be satisfactory to you. I hope to let you have the material in the course of a week. In March, uh, end quote. In March, Crowley wrote to a Chad to inform him, quote, I'll think up another name for Ouija, <laughs> end quote. But their business venture never came to fruition and Crowley's new design, along with his name for the board, had not survived. <laughs> it was probably because it was pretty bad. Yeah. You gotta assume. Oh, you gotta assume. But I wanna know. I, I'm so curious now. 
Crowley also states that there is a good way of using this instrument to get what you want and that is to perform the whole operation in a consecrated circle so that the undesirable aliens cannot interfere with it. You should then employ the proper magical invocation in order to get into your circle just the one spirit you want. It is comparatively easy to do. A few simple instructions are all that is necessary and I shall be pleased to give these free of charge to anyone who cares to apply. That's Aleister Crowley. Big fan of the Ouija board. I could see. I could see that. I wouldn't put it past him. There are also other many famous users of the Ouija board. I'm not going to name them all. I just took a few that I found really interesting that I didn't know about. <laughs> Roland Doe used a Ouija board. He's better known around here as Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> which the Catholic Church stated led to his possession by a demon. If you don't know him from the Journey to the Fringe episode, you may know him as the inspiration behind The Exorcist. <laughs> that guy that I kept flipping back and forth with <laughs> Ronald and Roland. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what episode. Another episode! What episode was that? Oh, that's the exorcism, husband and wife good, couple. Uh, exorcism, good for the... Oh yeah, exercise good for the soul. There we go. A that's beautiful a title. Episode. From the first year, I'm pretty sure. We had a good first Halloween episodes. Whole month of them. Go back, check them all out. There's lots of good Halloween episodes. There's actually a playlist on Spotify. His name is looking and wants to tell us what words to use. Oh, yeah. Before we are lost. <laughs> Especially in this one. Benevolent, benevolent, tell us. <laughs> We're so lost. <laughs> Emily Grant Hutchings claimed that her novel Jap Heron, a novel written from the Ouija board, was dictated by Mark Twain's spirit through the use of a Ouija board after his death. Ouija. Yeah, but to be fair, that's going to boost your sales if you say Mark Twain wrote it. Yeah, co-authored by Mark Twain. He's actually here with us on the podcast, you know. You just can't hear me. Uh, yeah, that's that third that third host that we always forget to tell you about. Oh, we got all the big people. Michael Jackson, other famous people who have died. Um, I'm sure they have. They're just at least oh, yeah. All the popes, you know. <laughs> Much of, I, If that's something that you would be into, listening to a podcast with all the dead folks. Okay, we do need to do a Pope episode at some point. It'd be nice to have them around for it. Yeah. I gotta move on, okay? Let's talk about dead Popes. Much of William Butler Yeats... Well, hold on. Much of William Butler Yeats' later poetry was inspired, among other facets of occultism, by the Ouija board. Ouija board, damn it. I'm gonna add that I have no idea who that is, but of all the things I left out, this one could not have been because I found it interesting. So not only have I given you a plethora of Journey to the Fringe episodes to go back to, but I've also given you some names of people you might want to look into because I did. It's the episode that keeps on giving. Here's another good one. Jane Roberts. Again, no idea. And her husband, Robert Butt, started experimenting with the Ouija board as part of Robert's research for a book on extrasensory perception. According to Roberts and Butts, how he could have went with a better last name. I am sorry. You, you get what you're born with. That's just how it goes. I guess so. On the 2nd of December, 1963, they began to receive coherent messages from a male personality, an energy personality essence no longer focused in the physical world. That was in quotes. Who eventually identified himself as Seth, culminating in a series of books dictated by Seth. I've also heard of that guy too. Is that not who? And not just from someone in my family. <laughs> Is also, that not who David Wilcock gets his stuff from? Seth? Yeah. No, that's raw. Right, right, sorry. That's, but I've also heard Egyptian of this guy gods. as well. Yeah. Maybe it would make for an interesting episode. I don't know. So we got Sozo and Seth. I don't know that Seth is bad. Might be. Might be. I mean, he's making people believe in Ouija boards, so. Yeah, he at, is. At the very least, an asshole. <laughs> Talking to strangers, it's. it's like I said. In 1982, poet James Merrill released an apocalyptic 560-page epic poem titled The Changing Light at Sandover, which documented two decades of messages dictated from the Ouija board during seances hosted by Merrill and his partner David Noy Jackson. 
Andover, which received the National Book Critics Circle Award in 1983, was published in three volumes beginning in 1976. The first contained a poem for each of the letters A through Z and was called The Book of Ephraim. It appeared in the collection Divine Comedies, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1977. According to Merrill, the spirits ordered him to write and publish the next two installments. Mirabelle Books of Number in 1978, which won the National Book Award for Poetry, and Scripts for the Pageant in 1980. Period. Next point. Early press releases stated that Vincent Fernier's stage and band name Alice Cooper was agreed upon after a session with the Ouija board. I know who he is. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've actually heard that anecdote before, too. I don't think I had. During which it was revealed that Fernier... Fernier... I, it looks French, was the reincarnation of the 17th century witch with that name. Alice Cooper? Really? No. Fernier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad we're both on the same page. Alice Cooper later revealed he just thought of the first name that came to his head while discussing a new band name with his band. Former Italian Prime Minister Romano Prodi claimed that under oath in a seance held in 1978 with other professors at the University of Bologna, the ghost of Giorgio Lepira used the Ouija board to spell the name of the street where Aldo Moro was being held by the Red Brigades. I don't know any of what that meant. Okay. Is Mussolini going to come up? Nah, he does He's... use the Ouija board. I assume. He seems yeah, like I, th I thought that was just a given, yeah. so I didn't put it in. And it's literally just Mussolini. No, not Mussolini. Houdini. <laughs> That's who I Oh, yeah, those are different people. I think. <laughs> I think. Okay, Mussolini using a Ouija board is not just a given. I'm sorry. Of the Italian prime ministers I know, Mussolini and Berlusconi are probably top two for Ouija board users. So, also, those are, I think, the only two I can name. I know there's a female prime minister right now who is related to Mussolini, but I can't remember her name. Really? Yeah. So the fun is over now because... Hold on. I guess we don't have a script. <laughs> because the fun's over. Because I wrote this late at night in the dark by myself, and I hated looking at the scary stories, but I can't let you guys down, so I had to be brave. I had to. So let me just find a, a story. Okay, this person says, I don't know if it has a name. I have no evidence and I do not care if you don't believe me. I've used a board with results and let something into my home. And I have been physically assaulted by this entity. It started out with that feeling like you're being watched and doors closing and footsteps on the hardwood when you were home alone. And progressed slowly into being kept awake by something shaking the bed or pulling off the covers. Sometimes even whispering my name. The board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places you would never have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then it was a black mass in the corner of the room, or a silhouette of a man watching you from the doorway. After that, it escalated pretty quickly. I had my hair pulled, fingers pricked, scratched, choked, held down in my bed while this thing whispered in my ear what could have only been Latin. And a pope, was it? I don't know. Let's ask them. <laughs> no, don't. No, no, it wasn't them. <laughs> <laughs> we Thank had you. our house <laughs> we had our house blessed and the bad thing hasn't shown back up just the normal occurrences now I wonder what the normal occurrences are but I will never <laughs> play with one of those boards again this person, that's the end of that one they're back to normal occurrences so all's good I was about 12 or 13 spending the night at a friend's house goofing around with the Ouija board when him and his sister and we were getting all sorts of gibberish plus words spelled out. Just kind of scaring ourselves for fun, not taking it very seriously when we got the message, I can see through the window. And then I can see you through his eyes. And there was just a small window in the basement room where we were and just the backyard and woods past the driveway visible through that window. We asked it more questions and it said, I'm under the car. So we somehow got up the nerve to go back out with a flashlight and peer under the car where we saw a huge black stray cat that was hissing. We ran inside freaking out and at that exact moment the power failed and all the lights in the house went out. We just about actually shit ourselves. A few minutes later the power came back and we sat up until dawn that night scared and we never played with the board again. So they made contact with the cat's consciousness. Just kidding. Maybe. Maybe. You don't know what's Who knows? happening. <laughs> Maybe just as good of explanation as any. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, let's read one more. I was terrified by myself last night, not reading these. I was spooked, though, at even the proposition that they were on my notes. Well, you just always gotta remember the popes are there. Some protect. <laughs> some definitely do not, but some protect. <laughs> it's only some. Fry Bernati, for one. Oh, he's not a pope. No. He protects no. me, though. <laughs> my wife and I... He's <laughs> AI. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Do you think he's in charge of AI Ouija? <laughs> Maybe. You know Probably what? You at least got briefed on it, I'm sure. You would have to, to be Friar Bernati. And... I wonder if we could get him for the show. No, he's too big. He's huge. I was gonna go somewhere with this and I forgot. Anyhow, I'm gonna read this. My wife and I had some unexplained things going on in the house we were renting. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. It turns out the Catholic Church does not condone the use of Ouija boards at all because it is communicating with demonic entities isn't it no it's not even demonic entities huh there's a answer for it on catholicanswers.com <laughs> are Ouija boards harmless answer no Ouija board is far from harmless as it is a form of divination the fact of the matter is Ouija heavy boards really do work and the only spirits that will be contacted are evil ones. I I believe that. I mean, it, it, probably a good one um, come through. But The Lord repeatedly condemns and any and all occultic practices, including divination. While many Bible was, passages could be cited, the following one is typical of this view of occultic practices. Quote, let no one yeah. be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spirits, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these is detestable to the Lord. Oh, it's Deuteronomy. I love Deuteronomy. That's where it says you can't have a bowl cut. Why? It's one of the rules. Can't wear a blended fabric. Can't get a tattoo. There's a bunch of fun stuff in Deuteronomy. I don't even know what Deuteronomy is, but it sounds like it's a book fun. in the Bible. Oh, or it's I should put an asterisk. It is fun on a Bible level of fun. And it's like dude is in like bro, right? Like dudes. Yeah, I don't think so. It's just shortened to DT, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. not spelled Deuteronomy. Okay. It's not like the study <laughs> of dudes or anything clear. like that. <laughs> It sounded like it was. Yeah, it was that the Catholic Church explicitly forbids any practice of divination. Ouija boards are included. Back to my last story. My wife and I had some unexplainable things going on in the house we were renting. So we got a board that we could try to figure out what we were dealing with. That is your first mistake. Oh, he goes on to say bad idea. The board was just a standard plain board. We use it one night to speak with hopefully our spirit. What we didn't realize is that the Ouija board opens the door for anything to come through and speak. The looking piece flew off the board near the end of our session and we had no real answers to anything we were speaking with something. But it was very evasive with its answers. Things got worse in the house and we eventually broke our lease and moved. Radios and TVs going on by themselves, water running. After the board, oh, things got bad. Voices, moving objects, and my wife says I got possessed one night, but I can't validate that I as I was asleep. It, so he sleptwalked. Sleepwalked. Is it sleptwalked or sleepwalked? He sleptwalked. Sleepwalked. He was sleepwalking. Yeah, let's just keep it in that tense. Yeah, let's I don't do like that. the past tense. That one's hard. <laughs> so this is uh, where I'm going to end it because nighttime Chelsea thought this was enough. To me, this is really spooky. Obviously, there's more of a history to it than I knew about. And the thing I always found funny about it was that it's a board game that you can get in any store, yet it has a little more suit. To me, anyhow, I look at it as something that's opening a door, but it's like next to Monopoly. I always thought that was funny about Ouija boards. But yeah, I learned some new well, things. Well, yeah. I mean, Monopoly 2 opens doors. It's just the family infighting. Yeah. But yeah, that's my episode. Okay, interesting. I am yeah. curious <laughs> if you came across stories of people building their own and having issues as well, or if uh, for the most part, the stories come from people who are using store-bought. I did not come across anybody making their own. However, making your own, it works just as well as if you were to buy a store-bought one. There's nothing that's going to set 
set apart you just making one and i always made them when are I was you a kid. are you saying there's nothing inherently divine about hasbro interactive <laughs> <laughs> and the plastics that they use. <laughs> oh, yes. It's like hardwired for spirits. They love it. They actually like murdered a bunch of goats and they use them yeah. in the plastic making process. Yeah. In the end, it is just a board with letters to use it as a communication device. Yeah, it's, with spirits. it's more so the invitation that if it's people the, are talking about the invitation, invitation to things to come in. Yeah. And the knowledge of how to use it and what you're communicating with that gets you in the end. I don't know because it never states whether or not well the, the one story that I had did say that they went out and bought one but usually yeah. people don't really say whether or not it was homemade or not yeah. I would assume they're probably more bought because people I don't think would make them as often yeah. yeah I made them when I was a kid because I wasn't allowed to have one and I didn't know why and I was so intrigued by why I wasn't allowed to have it and I've always loved ghosts and stuff so I would make them like like everywhere I went and just use them and I didn't know that they would be the same I always thought you needed an actual Ouija board you had to, to pay somebody yeah I thought it was I'm actually in my mind I'm likening having a Ouija board to having the internet in that you can connect with people that you've never met before <laughs> bad yeah. bad analogy but yeah because this is saying that what is happening with the Ouija board is connecting with spirits but yeah sometimes you can connect with the wrong person and they'll give you a virus you can with anything really you could get a wrong number yeah wrong. you get spam yeah yeah wrong something yeah although i'm assuming less dick pics with the ouija board <laughs> that's yeah. probably a good spot to leave off right <laughs> popes anything no okay well i have been taylor here with chelsea we are journey to the fringe thank you all for listening we'll see you next week Thank you for listening to Journey to the Fringe. If you have liked what you have listened to, please like, share, subscribe, or follow, depending on what venue you are listening to us through. Also, please, if possible, leave a five-star review, as that really helps us in the algorithms. Should you wish to interact with us, please check us out on your social media of choice. I bet you we are there. And if you really want to communicate with us and give us ideas for new episodes, or tell us that we're wrong and terrible, either way, please send us an email at journeytothefringe at gmail.com. For now, I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>